Hello and welcome back to awtoolbox.com. My name is Glenn Keller and in this video demonstration we are going to be diving into the world of searching inside of the Active Workspace 2412 client. So in Active Workspace almost everything that we need to do involves searching whether or not you're looking for data to release it, uh, looking for tasks to go in and execute them, uh, you're going through and creating an object and then you need to find it afterward. Um, the sky's the limit for searching and this tool has a lot of different capabilities available for it. In this demonstration, we're going to be focusing in on one of the key capabilities, which is this search bar way up here at the, at the top of the screen. Uh, so we're going to be really focusing in on that, the search results, and really what we can do with that search. Uh, in other videos, we're going to dive into things like doing active folders, which are technically searches, but just kind of a different way to look at it. Um, so just note that we are going to dive into searching in here. We're going to talk a lot about the key, to key ways that we do it, but there are other methods that we'll learn about more as we go through the using side. So first of all, searching in Active Workspace has two different meanings. So there is what you would call the global search up across the top, and then you have what you would call the advanced search, which is accessible if you click inside of that global search. So the global search, which is the main area at the top that you can just type into and hit go, has been tuned to search on the data that you need to see. And because of that tuning that has occurred, you're going to search a lot faster. Um, there's other reasons for that speed, but that top search is going to be a little bit less information that returns than what you would see in maybe the advanced search. The advanced search searches the entirety of the database. And because of that, this search is extremely slow, comparatively speaking, with the global search, which is up at the top. So when you're working with searching, most of the time we're going to be working with this global search, which is this component up at the top. Now this search, we've ran a couple of instances of it so far in the previous couple of videos, but in here that's made up of two components, you have what's called a pre-filter, which is this component here. And though you don't need to select something from here to execute your search, it does help expedite it a little bit. And your administrators may reduce or increase what's in this list to make things a little bit more applicable to you. For example, if I was searching for documents and I knew the ID, I would want to come in here and select the documents component um, and then perform my entry up here because then the resulting search won't take as long as it only is going to search within the scope of my documents. If I was searching for a PDF or something along those lines, then I know that it's a type of file in the system. So I'm going to reduce my search to just files so that I can search for just data related to files. And then I can type in. So we'll play around with a couple of different use cases there. Also note that when you select in the field, previous searches that you've run in the past show up here. Now, if you clear your browser cache, those will go away. Um, and then you can also access your saved searches from this menu as well. Now, if you hit this clear button, your previous searches will also go away. You can also undo it until you clear your browser cache. If I come in and I do a search, I want to make sure that I'm searching on the data that I want to see. So I want to see a object that has a part ID that includes 090. And I want to ensure that the name of it includes the word cut cutter. So in this case, the space in mine is acting as an and. So it's going to search for both of these terms. And when I hit go, you'll see that it doesn't come up with any of these that include both. If I get rid of cutter and I hit enter, you'll notice there's a lot of results that have 090 in them, or at least in the one of their attributes, you can see it's highlighted here because it is a search result that matches. 
So anywhere on this page that matches that search is going to show up for you, whether it's the intended location or not. If I do a search for just the word cut, notice I get nothing. So because I put a space in there originally and that one of the terms resulted in one thing and one of the terms resulted in another, it, it added an and and I know that based on the search results, I didn't get anything that matched both. If I come in here and I say 090 again, notice that 090 is searching for anything that begins with 090. Everything here will start with it. If I wanted to tune this to search for anything that contains it, I could add a star here, but as we will look at with different settings, we can tune what our wildcard options are. So in this case, it'll search for anything that contains 090. And then I could add something that includes nut. So now it'll be 090 and nut, and then it'll filter those searches a little bit further for me. And you can see that nut is going to be in the middle of that term. So it's searching for anything that includes nut. All right, so in here, I've done a couple of searches in here. Just note that you could also do or nut, and then you'll get more responses because it matches uh, one or the other of them. So, and notice this first one has a different ID than what the other ones did for my search. So it kind of proves it out a little bit. So there's a lot of different options. Take a look at our blog. We've got a, a tips and techniques video that we go through all the different combinations, everything from ranges of IDs to dates, um, those types of things. And we've also linked it to the video. So in here, once you hit search in this field, you'll notice a couple of things. So primarily speaking, you have what's called the filters. The filters are going to be a list of attributes that you can filter the results on. The problem is, is that they happen after the fact. So you had to search on everything first and then you can filter down. So you're essentially using a double search. If you would have used the pre-search or the pre-filter up here, the option called any category and reduced this down, when I did this, if I did files, notice it turns orange and hit search again. So in this case, nothing resulted that are called that in files. But if I do parts and hit search again, now again, nothing shows up. So if I do any category and hit search again, now I'll be able to see what the types are. And you'll see this is not a part nor a file. And that's why this is showing up. So I may have to add item revision to this list. But item revision, uh, notice there's 60 elements found for item revision and there's 60 results found in the search results. So I can come down and I can say who asked the question of who owns the data. I could explain or go down and see what the date released was and then use the widgets to select a range. And then when I'm done with all that, what it's going to do is it's going to essentially begin to narrow this down. I could hit show all at the bottom here to see a whole bunch of additional information about the data. So in here, I've got this data, I've got a list of it, and then you'll notice there is a little option up across the top here to change the format in which you're looking at the data. So this is a search result. It's just a list of data. There's nothing to expand on it. So you won't see a tree option here, but if I choose table, you'll see that the table will open. Now I can drag this over a little bit so I can work with it um, and give myself a little bit more room to work. When I'm in table view, notice I have a filter at the top. So I could say maybe I wanna filter this on a bearing and hit enter. And I can see that I get the options that match within that set of data and find those options specifically. I could clear that search using the X over on the right hand side as well. Up across the top, I could save this search and you can see that the definition of the search and what is selected 
are up across the top here. So I can kind of reference that. If I want to run the search a bunch, I could save it off. Um, and by clicking the save search feature, like we had done before, and I could say pin to home again to create it as a tile. Just note that if you are able to, as a group administrator, you could check this box and anybody in your group would see it as well. But that's just an option that you have. You don't have to do that. And a lot of times your administrators will disable that for you, your permission to it, just so you don't muddy up everybody else's inboxes. If I dock this back, it'll go over to the right hand side and I can kind of keep it over there for now. I could also choose to close it. If I come in and I say create a report, I could say create report and you can see this is creating an active summary report or an active report. So in here, the item report would execute against this and the summary report would execute against a query, so a, a set of data. So if I choose item report, then I can get the next piece of this and I can say start with a blank report or I can create a report using the following, which is this object, and then create that report. So that's, we'll talk about reports a little bit more in future videos. Um, you can also do selection mode. So if I say selection mode, it'll add checkboxes to the front of everything. And then I could come in and check the ones I wanna select. And that way I can see more information. Maybe I can compare the two objects over on the right. I could also say selection mode, select all, and that'll select everything, or I can clear selections there or just turn off selection mode. If you don't wanna do selection mode, simply select and hit shift select to select down or up, just like in any other application, control select to deselect or individually select. If I come over to the right hand side, I've got highlight and coloring. This is why the search results match what you typed into the field. If I select it again, notice all the yellow goes away. So if that's distracting uh, to have all that on the screen of what matches what you had searched, just turn that off real quick, a simple click. And then you also have search settings, which we'll dive into here in a minute. The table view provides you the default table interaction type. So we're gonna break down tables a little bit, but in the search results, you can see we have the arrange button as well as the wrap text and clear any filters. So in that video, we're gonna show you how to arrange columns and we're going to add and remove columns, save those off. We're also gonna show you things like wrapping text and um, adding filters, which is accessible by selecting the column header. So you can apply filters to the data as well. So a lot to do here in a small little window. Let me move this over a little bit more and then we'll go into the other layouts. So if I switch over to list, you'll see that it opens back up in this kind of list view. Also notice that the filters have opened back up. When I go to table view, the filters are here as well you can turn those on or off and add additional filters or remove them by clicking the filters button across the top. So searching provides a lot of interaction here and just note when you select something or multiple things depending on your need, you can right click on that data and you can choose to copy it, submit it to a workflow, revise, save as, or you can even add it to your favorites list if it's something you're gonna be frequent, frequenting. If you right click it again, the button will be all solid black if it's already in there and then notice the button has changed to remove from favorites. So depending on what you wanna do. If I go over to the right hand side, I can interact with that data using this little editor over here and I can see different pages that are kind of relative to it. But I can also use the dot 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 or the toolbar at the top to interact with it. So I can do a save as, a revise, create reports off of it. I can edit it uh, if I have permissions to it. So I could say, check it in, check it out, modify its properties. I could manage it. So manage it through a workflow. I could add it to changes, make it a problem item. Uh, I could pin it to my home, add it to favorites here. I could share it so I could get a link to it to Teams it to somebody. They click the link, it takes them to it in Active Workspace. 
I could also follow it if I'm using active collaboration, if there's any comments or discussions that happen relating this to this component, then I could get updates on that. I could also print information about it. And then if I come down a little bit more, if there are assemblies, we have more capabilities and these expand depending on what you have selected. I could also import and export data. This is more for um, getting things out into Excel or for your administrators. So if I choose export here, notice I could do all data, hit export, and I could get this out to Excel, assuming I wanted to open that. So I'm gonna close this for now, come back in, and that is searching in a nutshell for Active Workspace. Definitely play around with some of these alternate views that you can interact with and play around if you don't like this layout. With other layouts on this, notice that on the search results, I have even more layouts. I have some that are saved now that I had created by moving things around. And then I have top and bottom layout, the standard ones that I had seen before, depending on your need. So let's go back to the default. Notice there's a little save icon. If you open that up, hover over it, there's a little save icon if you wanna save any more off. Um, but that is searching with the global search. The next video, we are going to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, this one kind of went a little long here. So in the next video, we're gonna dive deeper into the advanced search as well as some additional capabilities that you can use with the search results.